independent communities obviously feels like we're in a particularly vibrant time uh, for people that are you know, looking for spaces to do this work. Uh, on the flip side of that, a lot of people are not being compensated for that work. Yeah. Is that a problem? I mean, in, 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 is, the, is the idea that the work that is the work is unpaid and the work that is paid is the industry? That's what I saw in Los Angeles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the theater in Los Angeles. Oh yeah, yeah, they play Wednesday to Saturday night. Great, okay, so the actors in the series. Oh great, yeah, yeah, they make the money in the series and they're not being paid in there. Well, that's not a professional theater. That's a gymnasium. Yeah. The reason I left LA is that I saw the bulk of an industry infecting the art of the actor and the designer and the writer and the cinematographer and the editor, infecting it from an industrial set of expectations. And I saw the cultural artistic side struggling to stay alive while the industry made all those demands. And I said, well, I don't really want a part of that because I'm, you know, I probably won't last long. So I came up here where it was, you know, it was all the theaters and this and that and whatever. And now it's changed here. You know, the, the industry has grown so big, so much television, so much this, that I'm wondering if it's, again, putting its industrial reflexes up into the culture of the art or the ambitions of the culture of who we are. It's really cool to see young men here, you know, nominated for this um, because I find I hear a lot about people getting headshots or getting, you know, uh, or going to parties or networking or, you know, whatever, whatever the fuck it is we were, we're supposed to uh, package and market ourselves in, in our hit and so on and so forth. But, but the thing that's forgotten in all of that is the fucking work. Mm. You know, what it comes down to in the end is the work. and. Uh, and I, I don't hear a lot of people talking about that, or they're talking about, you know, younger people, I should say. And, and even older people, to some degree, trying to reinvent or, or repackage or remarket themselves. And it's like, just do the fucking work. Yeah. I think there's this myth of like, oh, I, you know, TV's gotta be this way and theater's gotta be that way. And I think what it comes down to, like Tony said, is, is, is what are you interested in doing? Like, what are you interested in as the artist, as the actor? What are you, and it's, is it the work or is it the headshots? Yeah. You know, is it the work or is it how many acting teachers I have on my resume? You know what I mean? And that's the um, thing I'm scared about. As a young actor, there, there is an expectation of me to have the headshot, to, between me and another person, if they're yeah. casting a role, it's how many people have more Twitter followers or yeah. Instagram likes, totally. like that. That's Twitter. the thing, and I'm not, I'm not interested in it. Yeah, you can get a Twitter account if you have that's a fucking show. And that's, that's the thing, is like I'm not have have interested in it. As much as I want to promote the work in and of itself, but it, it, if that's going to be a primary focus, I don't want it a part well, of it. In the like 60s and 70s and 80s here, the way the theaters grew and all those theaters came into their sort of, into their own around that time, and that now there's a scene that, I don't know, talking in my butt here, but it's kind of reflecting that a little bit. There's an indie scene here with places like Storefront, Coal Mine, and those kind of things, where it's, there's a bit that theater secret club feeling where you, <laughs> where, 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 you know, all this industry stuff that we're talking about is not, we're still just the theater, you know? We're still the modest little, like, dirty little theater, you know? I think we see everywhere here, these theaters, they do it. I mean, there's gonna be barriers. There's gonna be stuff that's put in place. Um, but I mean, I see things, but it's a ripple effect, right? So one does it, the other does it, the other does it, and it's like you start seeing others. So you see like Unit 102 doing mm -hmm. things that are like, should be totally nominated for Doris, you know what I mean? It's like exquisite theater in a 50 seat house, and you're like, these guys said, let's get together, let's pick what we wanna make, mm -hmm. right? Let's pick what we wanna make, and make it, and they make it, and everyone, I think, I think we're in a very exciting, I'm, I'm excited by Theater in Toronto right now. We're in a very exciting time. Everybody's doing great stuff. They're, they're doing what they, what they want to make. I had, I had the chance, I, I was offered a part in The Motherfucker with a Hat, which opened in Kola, and, and I had to drop out because I was fucking broke. Like I could not pay my bills. And I did some shitty, I did some decent TV, I did some shitty TV, but I would have loved to do that show in that space with that cast, and, and I just couldn't. I guess it's just the battle of the styles and these things that we consider styles when we look at them in a way that they become our definition of theater. Um, that's when there's a problem. Theater, I think, as an art form, is capable of all of it. The pure entertainment you keep talking back to, an industry that could create jobs, um, 
do great things, big things or small things, explore that romantic idea or modernist idea of art with a capital A, art and culture or entertainment community outreach. The moment I think we are making a style of approach, our definition of theater, we're blocking ourselves from making these um, bridges or arcs from amateur into professional. These binaries, I think they're important, but in that, um, to build bridges, I think it would be an interesting way of um, negotiating how we can leave, like some talent can go into the bigger sides of the industry. I'm a fan of the big industry of Toronto too. I mean, there's a lot of great things I've seen at Soul Pepper, Buddy, sure. Stratford. Sure. Look at the factory theater. Like I, 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 I was a part of that whole boycott, and, and uh, I'll probably never work there again and stuff. But, but from a distance, uh, I'm so pleased to see them rising from the ashes. You know, and uh, from all the reports I got uh, this last season. You guys included uh, was fantastic, and each production it was a shorter run. Uh, there were shorter runs, but the level of work was, you know, uh, just it was rave after rave after rave, and uh, and that's cool. There's some. It feels like there's some some element of an independent spirit there, you know. So the compromise maybe is, well, we uh, we use we use the uh, the resources we have instead of doing a six week long. Thing that we think will uh, subscribers will not be offended by. Or Let's challenge the motherfuckers, run it for two weeks, and blow the fucking blow the place up. Just because it was the naked season, that there wasn't all these distractions you really had to worry about at the end of the day. There was still just you and the other actor, which was me on stage. There was only one other partner in this little, like what, a ten by ten sandbox, and, and we couldn't leave the stage. It was only each other, and then I had a stack of photos in the sand, and that was all I could use to do everything. Mm -hmm. And it became about the work rather than any sort of distractions. I think there's another thing that's capping, and it's, again, just looking at the kind of theater that is going on here and these kind of plays, that we're up against a kind of rolling, uh, revived romanticism that's coming back into the narrative arts. And if you look at television, if you look at popular television, if you look at popular movies, if you look at blockbuster, it is a kind of faux romanticism. And guys like me are old enough that I know when we studied acting, it was in reaction to the kind of decayed romanticism of the 19th century. This kind of stuff, right? And when you speak like that, because it's the music of them. And we were saying, no, it has to be rooted, it has to be grounded in emotion and thought and sexuality and body and all the rest of it. Well, guess what? It's back. If you look at, you know, playing Wolverine with eight bullet points, you're walking back into a kind of stylized romanticism into which violence is put without mind, memory, or consciousness. And we're on the outside. No wonder we're in small, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. No wonder <laughs> we're in small spaces. But look at the kind of stories that were told here, which were anti-romantic, as this kind of romanticism, which is the world you're going into, is pouring over us and makes me really worried. Mm -hmm. Because romanticism, combined with sentimentality, breeds violence. Mm -hmm. And the violence that we're seeing, you know, either the Trump rally, yeah. or the executions in Orlando, or what they're doing, the romanticism of beheading prisoners mm. and lighting them on fire is a kind of violent romanticism and it's really despicable. Yeah. But in a way, it is a response to the realities that we're facing. That is a political act. To, if we are all representing something, when we talk about um, diversity in terms of race and representation, when we talk about theater in terms of representation, when we talk about money in terms of 1% and what that represents. I mean, it's all representation of a something. So um, going to explore something that's representational, I don't think it's without roots. I think in itself is a political act. This is where I say it's a battle of the styles. I think they are both important. Each are talking to a different reality, responding to a different thing, and together they make up what is the theater and create a scene 
where we can have these conversations inside of it. I think the criticism of one is not to, you know, uh, snob the other, but rather to create the space for the other to also exist. And list the dialogue, the, the main area, the main part of the room mm -hmm. is for that kind of work. And this kind of work is in, no, the coal mine, that's 90 seats. What about 60 seats? What about 20 seats? Mm -hmm.